Hello and welcome to this FMSP online revision session. This session is looking at the MEI Statistics 1 specification and the topic of probability and discrete random variables. We'll start by looking at the specification. These are the things that you need to know for probability. Some of these are things that you've known since GCSE or earlier. But there are a few new things and a few things that are more significant in this module. Uh, point number two is important, knowing that the probability of an event may be found by finding that of its complementary event. In other words, the probability of something happening is 1 minus the probability of it not happening. And you need to know that because sometimes working out the probability of something directly can be a, be a huge amount of work, whereas working out the probability that it doesn't happen might be quite easy. Sample space diagrams, those are just two-way tables that you might draw to find probabilities. You need to be able to find the expected frequency of an event given its probability and understand about mutually exclusive and independent events, knowing that um, you add probabilities when you want to find out if A or B happen, if they're mutually exclusive, and that you multiply probabilities if you want to find out the probability that A and B happen, if they're independent. You also need to be confident in using tree diagrams, remembering to multiply along the branches for events where one happens and another happens, and then to add the relevant branches that you're interested in. You also need to be able to deal with uh, situations where we've got events that are not mutually exclusive, remembering then that the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B take away the probability of A and B, which you've counted twice if you add the probabilities. Of course, if the events are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B is zero, and in fact it works out to be the same. A picture is worth a thousand words, so being confident about using Venn diagrams can save you a huge amount of working. You need to be able to deal with conditional probabilities, both from the formula, which we'll look at in a minute, and from tree diagrams and sample space diagrams. And you need to know that the probability of A of B given A equals the probability of B if and only if B and A are independent. And again, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. For discrete random variables, there's not a huge amount to learn. You need to be confident in using probability functions given algebraically or as a table and be able to calculate uh, probabilities from those situations. And you need to be able to calculate the expectation or mean and the variance. Okay, so key points. As I've already said, Venn diagrams are often very helpful. Uh, quite often you can draw the diagram, fill in the numbers and then just read off the answers to several questions. It may seem obvious, but do remember to check that your probability is total one when you're drawing a Venn diagram in particular. And remember this key point, the probability of at least one happening is the same as the probability of none happening subtracted from one. This is a really useful trick. There's the conditional probability formula. And uh, if you struggle to remember which way round it goes, then why not think of A given B as the fraction that it looks a little bit like? And then that tells you that uh, it's the probability of B that you need in the denominator and not the probability of A. The alternative version, probability of B given A, would therefore be the same numerator, the probability of A and B, over the probability of A. Importantly, don't forget that if A and B are independent, then you multiply the probabilities to get the probability of them both happening. And this works the other way around as well. If when you multiply the probabilities you get the probability of them both happening, then they are independent. 
This is an important thing to learn and you'll often be asked to demonstrate this knowledge specifically in a question. For discrete random variables, there's just two things you need to know. The expected value of x is what you get when you multiply each of the probabilities by the value and add them all up. And the variance is the expected value of x squared, so when you multiply the probabilities by r squared, take away the mean squared. Always use the table to work out the sums. And don't forget to check that your probabilities add up to 1. OK, those are all the key points, so let's have a look at some exam questions. It's always a good idea to read through the question first, so let's have a look at this one. We've got people being asked whether they worked full-time or part-time, part-time being defined. Probably that information is not terribly important. One of the respondents is selected at random. Important to note, W is working part-time and F is female. We're given three pieces of information and we're asked to draw a Venn diagram. Now the Venn diagram will have four numbers in it so we shouldn't have any problems with that from the three that were given. We've then got to determine whether the events W and F are independent. That's basically the same as saying that probability of W times the probability of F equals the probability of W and F or not. That's what we're checking for. And then we've got to find probability of W given F. OK, let's go. So of the three pieces of information that were given, uh, the w only one that we can put in straight away is the probability of W and F, which goes in that middle section. We then know that the whole of the W circle must be worth 0.14. So to make that up, we need 0.03. Uh, the whole of the F loop is 0.41. So to make that up, we need 0.3. That gives us 0.44 altogether, so what's left to make it up to 1 is 0.56. OK, for part 2, determine whether the events W and F are independent. Well, w, probability of W times the probability of F, we're given those 0.14 times 0.41. And that equals 0 0.0574. That's not equal to the given probability for W and F, which was 0 0.11. So W and F are not independent. And finally, for part three, probability of W given F is the probability of W and F divided by the probability of F. W and F was 0 0.11. Uh, probability of F was 0 0.41. That's 11 40 once, which you might choose to give as a decimal. And you're asked to explain what this probability represents. So this is the probability that a randomly selected person works part-time given that they are female. Okay, let's go back and look to see how the mark scheme works for this question. For your Venn diagram, there is one diagram mark for uh, labelled intersecting circles. Make sure that you've labelled them. There's another mark for at least 
two correct probabilities and a third mark for the remaining two being correct. For part two, there is a method mark for multiplying those two probabilities and an accuracy mark for observing that uh, it's not equal to the given probability for W and F and remarking that therefore they are not independent. Do note that there are no marks for this question without correct working. For part three, there's a method mark for putting the uh, probabilities into the formula and there's an accuracy mark for giving your answer as either a fraction or a decimal. There's then an explanation mark for um, what P, W given F means and that must be in the context of the question. Okay, we've got a tree diagram question next. As before, read through the question first. So Andy can work, walk to work, travel by bike or bus and those probabilities vary according to whether the day is dry or wet. We've got a day selected at random, uh, probability that the weather is wet and Andy travels by bus, then walks or travels by bike, and then we've got a conditional probability question. All of those should be straightforward to calculate from the tree diagram. OK, so for part one, the weather is wet and Andy travels by bus. So that's this route through the tree diagram. So probability wet and bus is 0.4 times 0.7, which is 0.28. For part two, Andy walks or travels by bike. Well, I think it's going to be slightly quicker to work out the probability that it travels by bus and subtract that from one. So walks or bike is one minus the probability that he travels by bus because there are only two routes for bus. Um, so that's and we've worked one of them out already. So um, in addition to that one, we also want this route here. So it's one minus the star that we've already worked out, which is 0 0.28, and um, 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. So 0 0.72 minus 0 0.06, which is 0 0.66. And for part three, the weather is dry given that Andy walks or travels by bike. So P dry given walks or bike. Now we could work this out from the tree diagram, but as we've already worked out the probability that he walks or bikes, uh, it's going to be quicker to use the formula because we've already done some of the work. So probability that it's dry and walks or bike over the probability that he walks or rides the bike. So dry and walks or bikes, that's dry is 0 0.6 and walks or bikes is 0 0.9. And walks or bikes, we've just worked out to be 0 0.66. So that's 0 0.54 over 0 0.66, which simplifies to 9 elevenths. OK, let's look at the mark scheme for that question. For part one, it's just a straightforward method mark for multiplying, accuracy mark for getting the correct answer. For part two, uh, there's a method mark for working out um, these two bits and, an accuracy, and subtracting them from one and an accuracy mark for getting the correct answer. For part three, there's a method mark for um, working out the probability that it's dry and he walks or takes the bike. Um, there's a method mark with follow-through 
for using the answer to part two in the denominator there. And there's an answer accuracy one again with follow through from part two and only from part two um, for getting nine elevenths. Uh, and do note that for follow through to count, your probabilities must all be valid probabilities, in other words, between zero and one. OK, and to finish off a question on discrete random variables, uh, we've got a formula here and we've got five values of R. We've got to show that question to find K, uh, which means we need to make sure that uh, we've got enough working. And this is basically just going to be about checking that the probabilities add up to one. And then we've got to find the expectation and the variance. So this is a very straightforward discrete random variables question, but it covers all the material that you're going to be tested on. So the, the key here is just to set it out nice and neatly. So we've got R, the next row is going to be the probabilities, then we'll multiply each of the probabilities by R, and then we'll multiply each of them by R squared. And it's easiest if you do all of this in one table at the beginning and then proceed to answer the questions underneath. So R can be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and then we're going to need the totals. So, plugging in values for R. If R is 1, then I get 2K. If R is 2, 2 times 3 is 6K. And then 3 times 4 is 12K. 4 times 5 is 20K. And 5 times 6 is 30K. That adds up to 70K, which needs to be equal to 1. We then multiply each of these probabilities by the values above. So that's 2K. 12k, 36k, 80k and 150k and it's usually easiest to keep everything in terms of k. That comes to 280k and that is the expected value of x and then multiply by r again 2k, 24k, 108k, 320k, 750k and 1,204k is the total, and that's the expected value of x squared. So now I can proceed to answer all the questions. Total probability equals 70k equals 1 implies that k is 1 over 70. The expected value of x in my table, I've already shown that it's 280k, so that's 280 over 70, which is 4. And finally, the variance, expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Expected value of x squared is 1204k minus 4 squared. That's 1,204 over 70 minus 16, which comes out to be 1.2. And let's look at the mark scheme. There is a method mark for calculating all the probabilities. Another method mark for um, multiplying, them, multiplying them all by R and adding them up, and an another method mark for multiplying them all by R again and adding them up and then there's an accuracy mark for uh, taking that 70k equals 1 to give k equals 1 70th an accuracy mark for getting an answer of 4. Uh, there's another method mark here for uh, knowing that you subtract the expected value of x squared uh, uh, that you take the expected value of x squared and subtract the square of the expected value of x and an accuracy mark for 1.2. Um, that accuracy mark um, does allow follow through from uh, part two, but not for an error in part three. So basically, if you've already been penalized for having made a mistake in part two, you won't be penalized again. But if you make a new mistake in part three, then you won't get that accuracy mark. And the follow through does rely on your uh, variance being 
positive. Well, that's all you need to know about probability and discrete random variables for Statistics 1. I look forward to your company on the rest of the MEI S1 videos and wish you all the best with your exams. Goodbye.